And we're back with another Potato Vision special. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions after my last Pluto Trigger Valve Water Drop video. So if you haven't checked that video out, go check that one out first. I'm going to try to answer all of your questions in this one. Uh, thank you to my Patreons. You guys are awesome. Let's get into this. First things first, I'm using plain water this time for this demonstration. I have a... I always fill this thing up until it's overflowing. Then we're ready to go. So now we're ready to go. Um... Sorry for the mess, but I'll show you this. So it's about 12 inches from here, which is the top of the valve, to there, or the bottom of the valve, which is to the top of the water. So it's about 12-ish inches, maybe a little further. I didn't measure it. Uh, second off, I'm using a Canon macro lens. A couple of things to keep in mind here. If you have image stabilization, make sure that is turned off, and make sure you're in manual focus. Now, to get this thing focused... I usually just stick my finger in the middle of the water there and then squat down and manually focus. But I've already done that for the video. Um, next, um, I'm using the second method shown in the other video. I have the trigger going directly into the camera and then the camera using the STE3 from Canon firing the flashes. Now with the flashes you want to make sure you have these things set to their lowest power. That's going to make sure you have the shortest burst of light, which will, in effect, stop your motion. Okay, now I'm going to show you exactly how to dial this thing in so that you can get a collision. But first, a little bit of the theory behind it. Um, so keep in mind that these are all in milliseconds. The drop size is in milliseconds, which means that, that when you set this, you're just telling the valve how long to open and allow water to flow through. Secondly... Without seeing the code, I don't know this for sure, but my speculation is that drop 1, the flash delay, and the drop 2 delay all start simultaneously when you hit this button. Drop 2 will fall after this one runs its program. So your objective here is to get drop 1 to fall, splash, rebound in the water, make a pillar, and then at its highest point, drop 2 will fall and collide with it at that highest point, while the flash goes off simultaneously. So that's what we're trying to accomplish here. Typically, the reason why I just went through all this and explained this is because typically your flash delay, or your drop two delay, is going to be much, much shorter than your flash delay. And hopefully my brief explanation there helped explain why that's the case. Um, next up, you can do this automatically by pushing the settings button here. It'll increment this in as however much you want, you can do one millisecond, whatever, all the way up until you get the drop to its highest point. You do have to stop this manually though, so you have to be watching your camera and watching this. Personally, I'm just going to show you how to do it manually because I think it's a lot easier and helps you understand the process better. So the first thing we have to do is get drop one to come down, rebound, and make this pillar at its highest point. So to do that, we're just going to eliminate drop two. We're going to make this thing drop only one single drop and just dial this thing in. So here we go. Let's uh, see if it works. Yeah, I talked for too long and the flashes went into standby mode. So uh, let's try that again. All right, I, ch I checked it that time, so now we're ready to go. So as you can see, we captured the drop. The drop has not even hit the water yet. So we're going to go ahead and bump this up like 20 milliseconds because it has a long ways to go. On that one, we have a divot in the water, so maybe another 20 milliseconds. Now we have a pillar, so now we've got a rebound, a pretty nice pillar. We don't know if that pillar is at its highest point, though, so I'm going to just go up by increments of 5 to figure that out. As you can see on that one, we're starting to get a globule, so I'm going to say a 220 was probably pretty close to our highest point, but I'm going to go ahead and do another one at 230 just to be sure. Actually, that looks pretty good. I'll do another test shot there. I think 230 is the winner. Uh, just to show you guys, though, what happens if you go too far. That still is working pretty well. The 260, maybe. Okay, that's what happens if you go too far. The, the blob lifts up and comes all the way out of the water. Um, that can be really cool if that's what you're going for. Personally, we're just going to knock this thing back down to 240 
and keep it there for this demonstration. It's a really nice pillar. Now we need to make the second drop collide with that. So I'm just going to keep them the same size for this demonstration. You can play with all these things. and it's, I'm going to just start at 100. 100, I think, will get us probably pretty close. Okay, we don't even have the second drop in there, so we need to make this number smaller. So let's go down to 90 and see what happens. There you can see at the very top of the frame, the second drop is coming in. So we still need a shorter delay yet. Let's try 85. As you can see, it's getting closer. Let's try 80. Closer yet. I think 70 is going to be a winner, honestly. And there you have it, folks. A splash. It's pretty consistent. As you can see, oh, this that third one didn't do very well. Let's try again. There we go. But we're getting pretty consistent splashes there. Now, I would like to note that these numbers probably aren't going to work for you. Um, I'm just using plain water. If you mix anything into it to make it stringy, to make it have color, anything like that, it's going to change things. Uh, the distance you have between your valve and your a catch basin is going to make a difference. Um, the, everything really kind of makes a difference. So every every time I do this, the, I have to restart this process because it's different every single time. Um, it's not a long process as you just saw, but it does need to be done each and every time that I. Okay, now that you have all that dialed in, if you want to make these things bigger, you just have to adjust all of the numbers a little bit. Um, Getting a starting point to move from makes it a lot easier to play around with the uh, height of the bottom drop using bigger or smaller drops to get different effects. Uh, I'm not going to go into the artistic side of this ever, probably in a video. Um, you're on your own for that one. But uh, I wanted to show you how to go ahead and go through the process to find how exactly to get a collision. If you have any, quest any questions, please let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching, guys. Please check out my other videos and have an awesome day.